Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? It's Aunt Nikki of Your Story Hour, and it's time to read more in our book, The Mallards and Their Neighbors by Neil Wayne Northey. So let's see what's going on. Chapter 25. The Mallards are caught. The next morning, Bud started to the duck pond with his big cage trap. Besides the trap, he carried a long piece of stout cord, such as Farmer Smith used for binding the golden yellow grain into bundles. He also took along a large pocket full of corn and the mysterious package that had arrived through the mail. I am going with you, announced Mary as Bud started across the green meadow. All right. You may come if you like, said Bud. Bud let Mary help him carry the big cage trap to the duck pond, for it really was too large for him to manage well alone. You're not going to kill the mallards or keep them prisoners, are you? asked Mary as they walked along. There you go asking questions again, replied Bud. What difference does it make? If you try to keep them prisoners, I'll turn them loose. And if you're going to kill them, I'll stand on the bank all day and shoo them away from your trap. So there, said Mary, I'm not going to kill them. And I'm not going to keep them more than a few minutes, promised Bud when he thought that Mary might interfere. Picture time. You can see Bud and Mary watching. And it says, It was the place where the mallards always came out on the bank when they were tired of swimming. Then what do you want to trap them for? You wait a little while and I'll show you. Well, I suppose if I have to, I can, but I warn you not to hurt them. Bud and Mary carried the big cage trap to the place by the marshy bank of the duck pond where they had often seen the mallards sunning themselves. It was the place where the mallards always came out on the bank when they were tired of swimming. That is, if a duck ever gets tired of such sport. When the big cage trap was placed where Bud wanted it, he cut a short stick and propped up one side high enough so the mallards could walk under it. He tied one end of his long string to the top of the prop and unwound the rest of it until it reached to a large clump of tumbled bulrushes. You sit here out of sight while I go back and scatter the corn, Bud said to Mary. Bud scattered some of the corn on the ground in front of the big cage trap, but most of it he placed under it. Pull the string and see how it works, he called to Mary. Mary gave the string a pull and down came the front of the big cage trap. That's good, said Bud. Now wait till I set it again. Bud propped up the front of the big cage trap as he had done the first time, covered it with a few fuzzy cattails to partially hide it, and then hid himself in the large clump of tumbled bulrushes beside Mary. I guess the mallards must be over in the sheltered little cove, said Bud, but they'll be back here before long. I hope they come soon, said Mary. Bud cut a few fuzzy cattails and stuck them around to fill some openings in the tumbled bulrushes. He was afraid the sharp eyes of the mallards might look through the openings and see Mary and him. Then he put some over the top so the mallards could not see them if they flew over. After a while, Mary grew tired of waiting. I wish they would hurry, she said. Bud and Mary had not been waiting long, but it seemed like a long time to Mary. Suddenly, Mary pointed across the duck pond. Oh, look, there they come, whispered Bud. Not so loud. Keep down, or they will see you. Don't try to watch them, or you will scare them away. I'll do the watching. I want to see them, said Mary. Here, stick some of the swamp grass into your hair. That will help to hide it, said Bud, and he put a few pieces in his cap. On came the mallards. When they were near shore, they stopped to play tip up and dive a while. Mary's heart was jumping, and once she almost caused Bud to pull the string, some of the mallards were swimming near to shore. Quiet down before you spoil everything, whispered Bud. You are shaking as if you were cold. I can't help it, said Mary. I'm afraid they won't go under. Of course, the mallards had no idea that Bud had set a big cage trap for them. 
They thought everything looked the same as when they had left. They were not looking closely because they were so used to finding everything the same when they came back to sit on the marshy bank. At last, Mrs. Mallard walked up the bank. She noticed a few grains of corn lying there, and she ate them. A little further, she saw some more, and she walked over and ate them. Quack, 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 said Mrs. Mallard. Look at all the corn I have found. Didn't take the rest of the mallards long to scramble out of the water and up the bank, and soon all of them were scooping up corn with their broad bills. Bud gave the string a quick pull, and down came the big cage trap. Oh, goody, said Mary. We caught every one. Say, that was lucky, said Bud. I didn't expect to get more than half of them the first time. Go easy, so not to frighten them until they get used to us. They might fly against the big cage trap and hurt themselves. I wonder what Mrs. Mallard is saying to her youngsters, said Mary. They must be terribly scared. Chapter 26. A New Experience for the Mallards Of course, when the Mallards first learned that they were prisoners, they were frightened. They could not understand what had happened. Bud and Mary approached the big cage trap quietly, so as not to alarm them. The Mallards ran into the small cage at the back, and Bud closed the door between. Well, now that you have them caught, what are you going to do with them? asked Mary. Band them, said Bud, as he took the mysterious package from his pocket. What do you mean? asked Mary. Bud opened the box. In it were a number of small aluminum bands with numbers on them. We'll put a band on a leg of each of them, and then we'll know if they come back to the duck pond next summer. How interesting, said Mary. So that is what you got from the government. Yes. You see, we must get a permit from the government before we can band birds. Then, when we put a band on a bird, we make out a card saying what kind of bird we put it on, where and when we banded it, and such things, and send it to Washington. These cards are kept on file, and if the birds are ever caught again, the government knows how far they are from the place where they were banded. Bud reached his hand into the cage and brought out one of the mallards. After a band had been put on its leg, Bud wrote the number of the band on a card and put the duck back into the big cage. Then he finished filling out the card with the information that he was wanted. One by one, the mallards were banded in the same way and placed in a large cage until at last Bud came to Mr. Mallard himself. Oh, see here, exclaimed Bud. Mr. Mallard is already wearing a band. Now, where do you suppose he got it? We must send the number to Washington and find out. Let's see, it is 96,501. I'm anxious to find out where Mr. Mallard was before he came here. Bud wrote the number on a piece of paper and put Mr. Mallard in with the rest of his family. Then after all of them had been banded, Bud raised the big cage trap and away flew the Mallards. Let us see if we can catch the spoonbills also, suggested Mary. I haven't any more corn with me, said Bud, but we can come back tomorrow and try it. We can leave the big cage trap hidden in the jungle thicket. Bud and Mary carried the big cage trap into the jungle thicket and then started back to the grand old house. How did you know about banding birds? asked Mary as they walked along. I thought it would be nice if some of our feathered friends on the old homestead were marked so that we would know them if they came back next year. I, that night after we saw the mallards playing sail, I asked Dad about it and he said he would write to the biology survey for me. It was too late to do much this year, but next year I intend to have some different kinds of cage traps ready and start early, because the fin Fish and Wildlife Service have asked us to start a banding station on the old homestead. Yes, I suppose it is a little late to do much this year, said Mary. The bluebirds have gone to the big mountains where it's cooler, and the robins and the orioles and the kingbirds have left their nests also but it will be fun to band the spoonbills. I'm going to write to Washington and send the number of Mr. Mallard's but band, said Bud, when they arrived at the grand old house. And this is what Bud wrote. Dear Sirs, 
I received the bird bands that you sent to me, and today, when I was putting them on the mallards, I found that Mr. Mallard already had a band on his leg. It was number 96,501. I wondered where this was put on and when and also who did it. I am going to try to band, to put bands on the spoonbills tomorrow, and then I will send all the file cards to you, which you sent. Next year, I want to put bands on lots of birds, but school starts next week, and you know how much time that leaves a fellow. I hope you will not forget to tell me who banded Mr. Mallards. Yours truly, Bud Smith. We have a picture. Don't want to miss the picture. Picture says, Robin Red's family had already left the nest. A few days later, Bud received an answer to his letter, which read... Dear Bud, your letter in which you gave us the number of a band that you found on the leg of an adult male mallard has been received, for which we thank you. You will po probably be interested to know that this duck was banded two years ago this fall at Thompson, Thomasville, Georgia by C.T. James. We hope that you will report the progress of your work from time to time and we know you will find it interesting. Yours, very truly yours, Fish and Wildlife Service. How far Mr. Mallard has traveled, said Mary when Bud read the letter to her. Yes, and not once, but several times, replied Bud. You see, he was banded two years ago, and that means he has made three trips since then between the sunny Southland and the land of cool breezes. Oh, I hope that the Mallards come back to the old homestead next spring, said Mary. That's the end. Chapter 27 is tomorrow, a visit with Sandhill the Crane. Come back. Tell us if you guys are enjoying this. Talk to you later.